Hello and welcome to this lesson on nuclear density, which is part of the nuclear physics topic in AQA A-level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at how to calculate the nuclear density from experimental values. So if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson, we should be able to calculate the nuclear radius of a nucleus with a derived equation, define the nuclear density of the nucleus, and finally calculate the nuclear density of the nucleus, which links into the following part of the AQA A-level physics specification 3.8.1.5 the nuclear radius so once physicists had calculated the radii of various elements they did ponder the following questions how does the size of the nuclear radius affect the nuclear density which nuclear radius would have the bigger density and why do you think that so we could have either you know uranium the largest naturally occurring and uh, um, nucleus, and you can also have helium, the, sm the thing with the smallest nuclear radius with the presence of neutrons. So, which of these elements would have had the bigger nuclear density and why? So, physicists decided to theoretically find this out by deriving the equation for nuclear density. Now, in this particular um, uh, derivation, they made one assumption that the nucleus is perfectly spherical. Now this is reasonable considering that the nucleus is stable and the most stable shape we know in the universe is a sphere. So for an object to exist in the most stable manner, they must contain the lowest amount of potential energy. And this occurs when the nucleons are arranged in a, in a sphere shape. So what we can do is that the previous electron scattering experiment calculated the nuclear radii of different nucleus. So we can then use the nuclear radius measurements to calculate the nuclear density of the nucleus. So if we have a nucleus consisting of A nucleons, we can assume that the mass of of the nucleus is A times by U, where U is the atomic mass unit, and V is the volume of the sphere. So we can say that density is equal to mass over volume. So we can substitute the volume of a sphere and the atomic mass into this particular equation. So we get that rho is equal to AU over four 4 over 3 pi r cubed. Now, in this particular equation, we can substitute the nuclear radius that we covered previously. So we can now say that rho is equal to AU times over 4 over 3 pi r0 a to the, third, to the power of a third or cubed. Now you'll notice here that we've got a to the a to the power of a third and the entire actual value in the brackets cubed, so the power signs can cancel each other out. So now we can say that rho is equal to AU over 4 over 3 pi r0 cubed A, because again, that A to the power of a third cubed will cancel those two things out. Now you'll notice on the top and the bottom of this particular equation, there is the term of A, the, num the uh, number of nucleons. So the value for A cancels out in the equation. So we're left with rho is equal to U over 4 over, th 4 over 3 pi r0 cubed. So we know that U is the atomic mass unit and R0 is the average nucleon radius. Now you'll notice that this equation does not include the nuclear radius or the nucleon number. In fact, all of the values in the equation are constants. So this shows a couple of things. That firstly, the nuclear density is independent of the nuclear radius and the nuclear number as neither appear in the equation. And also because all the values in the equation are constant, it indicates that all all nuclei have the same density irrespective of size. So helium, the lightest neutron containing nucleus, and uranium, the largest naturally occurring nucleus, have in fact the same nuclear density. We can also show this because we know from our nuclear radius equation that R cubed is directly proportional to A and volume is directly proportional to A because R cubed okay, would link in like that. Now as the mass of each nucleon is approximately the same, this indicates that that if the volume is constant and the mass is constant, it indicates that the density of nuclear matter will be constant. So what we can conclude is the following, that nucleons are separated by the same distance regardless of size of the nucleus and are therefore evenly separated inside the nucleus. So we can therefore conclude that because the nuclear density is constant, that you've got the same nuclear separation in all nuclei of all the elements in the universe. Now please remember that the nucleons in a nucleus have the same average separation. This is an average term due to there being two types of particles in the nucleus. 
nucleus. Now a proton neutron and a neutron neutron only interaction will experience the attractive strong force whilst a proton proton will experience the repulsive electromagnetic force alongside the strong force indicating there will be different separations inside the nucleus. So neutron neutrons and neutron protons are closer together than proton protons. However we do assume in this equation that the average nucleon separation is constant in the nucleus. So the value for average nucleon separation is the same for every nucleus in the universe. So all elements in the universe have the same separation between nucleons. So therefore all elements have the same nuclear density. So this means that when a nucleus changes its proton or neutron number, it changes the nuclear radius by the same amount each time, which is backed up in the equation that the nuclear radius is equal to R0 a to the power of a third. Now, it's important to note that this is actually why okay, large nuclei need more neutrons than small nuclei. Because if we keep our average nuclear separation in the nucleus the same for all nuclei, because our nuclear density is constant, this indicates that when we add more protons and neutrons to make large nuclei, well then the radius of our nucleus has increased to be larger than the range of the strong interaction. So if we consider uranium, because our nuclear separation is constant, this means that the nucleons at either end of the nucleus are much further apart. So we need more neutrons to provide the attraction to keep them together. Whilst for helium, again because our nucleon separation is constant, this means that the nucleons at either end of this nucleus are very close together, so you don't need as many neutrons to provide an attraction to keep it together. So large isotopes, because our nucleon separation is constant, means that the nuclear radius is larger than the strong force range, so more neutrons are required to gain stability for this particular nucleus. Whilst for small isotopes, because our nucleon separation is constant, the nuclear radius will be smaller than the strong force range, so stability can be achieved in these nuclei with fewer neutrons than in the larger isotopes. So if we actually look at our equation for nuclear density, rho equals u over 4 over 3 pi r 0 cubed, we can place values into this particular equation and we get out the following. We get that our nuclear density is 3.4 times 10 to the 17 kilograms per meter cubed. So we can approximate that for every nucleus it has a nuclear density of 3 times 10 to the 17 kilograms per meter cubed. So this is actually an enormous density. If a table tennis ball was made out of nuclear matter as opposed to atomic matter it would have about a mass of 8 million tons. Now please do remember that nuclear density is much larger than atomic density because atomic density contains lots of empty space not found in the nucleus. Again, a cubic millimetre of nuclear matter has the mass of about 340 million kilograms, which is about the same total body mass of 4 million adults. So this provides further proof okay, from the alpha particle scattering experiment that the atomic radius was much larger than the nuclear radius. So as the nuclear density is significantly greater than the atomic density, this suggests three important facts about the structure of the atom. Firstly, most of the atom's mass is found in the nucleus. The nu nucleus is much smaller compared to the atom and an atom must contain lots of empty space. So again, if the earth was squashed until it reached the same density as nuclear matter, it would have a radius of about 200 meters. But what stellar object in the universe will have a similar density to a nucleus? Well, a neutron star has a very similar density to the nucleus as it only contains neutrons. So this object will only have the attractive strong forces acting on it. This means that there's no space in between the nucleons, unlike atoms, so they will have a nuclear density. So whilst nuclear matter has a density of approximately 3 times 10 to the 17 kilograms per meter cubed, a neutron star has a density on order of 10 to the 16 kilograms per meter cubed. So you might ask the first question is, why does it become more dense than a nucleus if you've only got the, the attractive strong force acting between neutrons. Well, Whilst if the neutron star consists of solely, solely neutrons, there's no repulsive electromagnetic force present, there is a rule in quantum mechanics which states that no two neutrons can occupy the same quantum state, which we call the Fermi exclusion principle. This means that neutrons have to retain their mass and volume regardless of compression. So to do this, they produce a neutron degeneracy pressure to indicate that it won't completely squash the star to a point. But you might have noticed that actually the neutron star density density is slightly less than that density of the nucleus. So why is that? 
Well, the reason for that is because actually okay the core does does have the same density as the nucleus however the crust of a um of a neutron star has a much lower density since the neutrons spread out slightly because there's no pressure above them from the neutrons to combat the neutron to density pressure beneath them so this gives you a slightly lower average density which is why it's slightly less than 10 to the 17 kilograms per meter cubed so if we've learned in today's lesson we can interpret interpret the equ equation as evidence for constant density of nuclear material and we can calculate the nuclear density so if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson we should be able to calculate the nuclear radius of a nucleus with a derived equation define the nuclear density of the nucleus and finally calculate the nuclear density so i hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on nuclear density which is part of the nuclear physics topic in aqa level physics thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day